What's going on guys? Uh, today I wanted to talk about pH different meters and why is it important to check your pH, your parts per millions and things like that. Um, the first thing I like to talk about is your nutrients, where they are readily available at. If you look at a hydro system, uh, you looked at every nutrient, whether it was nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, down to your micronutrients, uh, magnesium, boron, copper, manganese, things like that. Um, if you look at this chart, you can tell where everything is readily available. In a hydro system, 5.5 to 5.8. That is the idea range to keep your pH so that way your plants can absorb those nutrients. Uh, now what can happen, let's say I don't check my res every day on a hydro system. All right, let's say my plants start to uptake more water or more nutrients, it will throw your pH off a little bit. So if I'm not checking it, let's say my pH gets down to 5.0. Um, I start to see yellowing in the plants. Well, that's because my plants aren't uptaking the nutrients. Even though the nutrients are there, you know you've put those salts in that system, but you get out of that pH range, your plants aren't necessarily going to take up certain ones. Now, Nitrogen, you can look, and I mean, it's a wide range. Like, it can handle taking up nitrogen from a low to a high pH. But it's some of those trace minerals, some of your other macronutrients that your plants just can't absorb. Uh, so that's why 5.5 to 5.8 is why it's important to keep it at that pH level. That's where you're going to have the healthiest looking plants. You'll have better success at that pH range. Now, soil is a little bit different. Uh, soil, I like to, I, I kind of change it around. So let's say I'm in my vegetative growth. Uh, you'll notice that around 5.8 to 6.0, your plants are going to uptake more nitrogen. Uh, so during my veg, I always keep it between 5.8, 6.0, 6.1 if, if I go over just a little bit. The nice thing it was with soil, you've got that little buffer there. So it's not like a hydroponic system where it absolutely matters. I mean, it has to stay on point in a hydro system. That's why you'll see a lot of people don't have the success that they're really looking for is because they're not on top of that pH. Now, during flower, you'll notice that between 6.2 to 6.4, 6.4 is on the higher end where phosphorus is readily available. Uh, so when you're trying to get those bigger, larger fruits and flowers on the little bit of a higher pH scale is where you want to be to have larger fruits and flowers. Uh, like I said again, soil, you know, if I'm at 6.0 to 6.4, it doesn't worry me too much because I know that within that range, all of my other micro and macronutrients are available to the plants and I'm going to hit it with a little bit more phosphorus to get those larger fruits and flowers. Um, parts per million, I know we've, I've talked about it before, parts per million matters. But with an experienced grower, you're going to notice it'll make you a better grower using parts per million. Um, I'm old school, like I've been doing this a while. High pressure sodiums, metal halides were the only things that were available 20 years ago. You know, the, the LEDs weren't even thought of at the time. Uh, so an HPS metal halide grower, you would use your metal halide during vegetative growth. Uh, typically, if my plants are, you know, young little seedlings, to semi-mature plants, you wouldn't hit those things with over four to 500 parts per million. You know, that was getting on enough food to feed your plants, you're not gonna burn it, they still can take up the nutrients that are there. Um, high pressure, like once you got into flowering, that's my high pressure sodium. And, and the reason they did that, your metal halides was that blue spectrum. Uh, it was more focused for vegetative growth. Uh, your high pressure sodium were more of that orange spectrum. So getting into flour, I would usually be at between five and 600 parts per million um, as I got into week four, five, maybe even six of flour, depending on what my plants are looking like. At the most, I would hit was 1,000 to 1,200 parts per million. I mean, that's a good amount of salts, but you gotta think, what I was taught was, your high pressure sodiums and metal halide bulls, they illuminate light. So you used to have the, the metal, your hoods that were above there. So as that light is refracting, it has to hit the reflector to come and bounce back down onto your plants. Uh, so what's happening is you're losing lumens or um, PPE. That's, that's what a lot of things are measured in these days or micro moles. You're losing that when your light's refracting off of another substance. The same way if you're trying to use... Um, Tin foil. Tin foil has so many little curves and bends that when that light hits, it's refracting into a thousand different directions instead of focusing directly onto your plants. 
So the difference is with these LEDs, your light's not bouncing everywhere. It is directly focused onto your plant's leaves. Uh, so your plants actually metabolize and they'll go through photosynthesis twice as fast. So that's why on a metal halide HPS, I'm always at a lower parts per million. Uh, now one thing I have learned is running these LEDs, I'll, I'll hit them hard in the beginning. If I'm taking my clones directly out of the machine, put them into like my Floroflex system, I'll hit those things at a thousand parts per million. And you used to, I'd be afraid. I mean, you used it would burn your plants up under a metal halide. You would just get so much salt buildup, it was way too much for them. But with these newer technology on these LEDs, you're actually you need that food. You, you need more of it there so your plants can metabolize and have happier, healthy plants. That's how I get those huge stalks on those things within six weeks, because I'm at you know 15, 1600 parts per million into my vegetative growth. So that being said, I've got a few meters that I'm wanting just to kind of show what we've got, what the high end versus your low ends, why are they better, why are you going to spend, you know, $300 on certain meters versus 50 on some of the other ones. Uh, so let's take in our HM. Um, HM, I, we've been carrying these things for a couple years. I haven't seen too many of them return, uh, but they've only got a year warranty on them. And, and I have noticed is that over time, if you're using these things consistently, you're you get what you pay for. I've, I've seen some of these cheaper $15, $20 meters that used to have a little screw in there that when you would put it in your calibration solution, you would have to turn it to, okay, it's in seven. I'm going to turn this little screw to make it say seven. So they weren't that accurate. The same way as, as some of the ones that you stick directly into your soils. You, you start paying 15, 20 bucks. It's not going to be accurate. It might give you an idea range like, oh, you, you may be at six, you may be at seven, but, but you don't really know. That's why some of these more high tech more expensive meters are the way to go don't get me wrong I am not advertising for anybody I don't get paid to recommend any of these but I this is mine this is my meter I have a blue lab combo meter I have had this thing for eight years it's dirty as hell it has been beat around this thing is still solid now I've had to replace my pH probe about three times over the course of eight years uh, Blue Lab usually gives you about a year on these probes. If you take care of them, uh, they have a solution it's called potassium chloride, KCL, that is literally what's inside of your probes. This liquid that's inside of here is potassium chloride. So when you keep these things filled up in here, I store mine in potassium chloride. Uh, so what's happened is as these things are just sitting in here, they are taking up small amounts of what you have in there. So if you're using distilled water, RO water, it will eventually ruin the life of your probes. So that's why I use potassium chloride. And in the meantime, it helps you slowly fill this up. So you get a much longer life out of these probes. Uh, the same way, even on these, you know, even on the HM meters, store these things in potassium chloride. It will help you get a longer life out of these probes. Um, calibration simple with both of these, even the Blue Lab ones, the combo uh, meter from Blue Lab. You get some solution that's, um, I've got a 4.0 and a 7.0 solution. Start with the 7.0. Put that meter in there, let it sit. Sometimes it can take 30 seconds to a minute before it really gets to where you can hit that calibration button. You want to be within 0.1 to 0.2. So if I put this in some solution, I'm at 6.8, we're good. I'm going to go ahead and hit that calibrate button. Um, same way with the 4.0 solution. Put it in there, let it sit. If I'm at 3.8, 4.2, hit the calibrate button, and it's going to calibrate it to where you need it to be. Uh, typically, I do know the the HM meters don't have a check mark on them, but the Blue Labs do. Uh, so they literally, when your check mark is gone, it's time to recalibrate these. Uh, it's usually a month and a half, two months. Sometimes, you know, every three months is an idea time to recalibrate your pen. Uh, just because the fact is, you know, you might be sitting here feeding what you think is 5.8 or 6.2. In reality, could be 6.5, 6.6, 7. You, you know, you really don't know. So that's why ideally you want to calibrate these things more often. Um, parts per million. So like I said, that was pH. We've got a couple different ones from uh, HM, Blue Labs. There's other ones out there. In my opinion, these are better quality than some of the other cheaper ones you find. Blue Lab, by far, top of the line, best meter that's out there. Um, same companies have parts per million meters. Um, like I said, I am not here to sell anybody anything, one thing better than the other. 
parts per million, you're giving out an electrical s current. Basically, that's what EC is. It's ele elect electrical conductivity. That's what this is measuring. So it's sending out a signal. It's going to measure the salts. It's going to tell you what you are. Um, now, there are three different scales. There's a 500 scale, a 700 scale, and then your EC, and also micro Siemens, which is basically the same as EC. Um, EC is whole numbers like 1.2s, 2.0s, that if you get used to reading it that way, it does make it a little bit easier, but most of the feeding schedules and everything that I've seen are usually on the 700 scale. So I've just been, over the years, the 700 scale is the easiest for me. That's why I'm saying, okay, like 700 or 1400 or 1500, that's on a 700 scale. Um, your 500 scale is actually, will measure the same thing, but the numbers are gonna be a little bit lower. Same way with the EC, it's measuring the same thing, but it might be, you know, 2.0, something like that. That's why the truncheon, if you want to just know what you have at all times, you can see we got EC on one side, we've got the 500 scale, we've got the 700 scale. Uh, so let's just say 2.0 is an easy number to know. All right, so if we're at 2.0 on the EC scale, you're at 1,000 on the 500 scale, and you're at about 1,400 on the 700 scale. Now, you would think like, oh, well, why not just do whole numbers on the 500 scale? For some reason, like I said, I've been doing this for so long that everything I see is a 700, and that's just what I like to use. Uh, to each their own, whichever makes it easier for you to understand the salts that are either in your hydro system or in your soils, go with whatever way is the easiest for you. Uh, you know, I never try to change anybody's ideas about anything. What works for you or what works for me might not work for anybody else. Uh, so whichever the easiest for you, go with you on that route. Now, the nice thing about my combo meter is that I do have my dirty probe on here, but I've got parts per million and I got my pH that I can go between both of them. Uh, you can tell it's probably really low. It's at 5.0. My solution in here is at 5, but you're not going to be able to really measure any on the nutrient side just because I'm not measuring anything. But it's easy to switch back and forth through. It's got temperatures. It's got a, a temperature probe built into my PPM. If you can, eh, you can't really see it in here, but it does do temperature correction. Now, I know you see I've got this multimedia here. So it's from Blue Lab. The nice thing about these probes right here is that this one is only made for water. Uh, this one right here, it's got a special probe that I can put this directly in my soil. I can go directly into my cocoa and I can also measure water with it as well. They are a little bit more pricey, but if you're running that cocoa system or if you want to know what's in your soil, that's the easiest thing to do. You pop that probe in there and it's going to tell you exactly what's there. Now, you've got to make sure the soil's wet or the cocoa's wet for what you're measuring because you have to get, it has to go into this probe to give you any type of reading. Um, now, this meter right here is only pH. Now, you can get these probes and I can exchange it on my combo meter so that way I can have this probe on a combo meter as well. They're not necessary, but it just gives you an idea of what's really going on into your soils. And they also make these nice fancy little cases. If, you, if you're like me, you carry this thing around everywhere, you want to keep it protected, uh, toss one of those in there and it's, I've had, like I said, had this thing eight years, I've had no issues with them at all. Uh, so that being said, this is just a quick rundown on pH, why is it important, why does it matter, is because you're going to, it'll make you a better grower. I mean, especially, I, I talk to a lot of people and like, well, I'm having yellowing here, I, I don't know what's going on, and, and first thing I always ask is, what's your pH, what's your parts per million? And typically, you, most of the, the novice growers, they, they don't use these meters. You know, you want something that's quick and simple, easy to fix your problems, but you could be giving them all the nutrients in the world and you can't fix a problem by giving it lots of nutrients if your pH is out of whack. So that's why pH matters, it's why it's important. Parts per million matters too, in my opinion, pH is more important than parts per million because PPMs, it's easy to cut back on the amount of salts that I'm giving, but if I'm giving them them salts and it's out without of the pH range, my plants can't absorb those anyways. So hopefully this helps you guys out, kind of just give you a quick rundown of, of what's what with pH, what different types of meters we have, what different, I don't know if I talked about price range, but you know these smaller ones range from like 50 bucks all the way up to about 120 for these guys right here. But like I said, better quality, Blue Labs hands down are, are the best meters that are out there. Alright guys, don't forget, like and subscribe. Y'all have a good one.